The Adam Armand Show on Talk Radio, 790 AM, KABC. Hey, we're here right now with a segment called Can You Relate? What I usually do is share some great insights on meeting, dating, and relating with members of the opposite sex, but on this episode of Can You Relate? Well, we're going to get a little crazy here because we're going to be focusing on Yo Mama. That's right, mom's motherhood and embarrassing lessons you learned from your mom. Okay? If you love your mom, make sure you call 1-800-222-5222. We want to hear from you and share five things you love about your mom in 20 seconds or less. If you're the first one to do that, the first caller to get through, well, we're going to send her a bunch of roses. That's 1-800-222-5222. Oh, my goodness, we have people already. We have Helen on line one. Helen, where are you? Hi. Hey, Helen, how I'm are you doing? Home. I'm good. How are you? Oh, better than best. I'm amazing right <laughs> now. And I'm about to listen to a, a lovely young lady by the name of Helen tell me five things that she loves about her mom. When I say go, you go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, and go. She taught me to be independent. So I love her for that. Mm -hmm. She told me or taught me not to judge others. Mm -hmm. She taught me that love is more important than money. Mm -hmm. She taught me to respect my elders. Yes. And she grounded me when I was a bad kid. Well, you know something. And I love her for all those things. You did that in 10.9 seconds. Woo! You are a winner, girl. Can you, can you, can you, can you? Oh, my goodness. Well, I get she ran off. Okay, Helen. Helen, are you still there? I'm still here. Oh, you're still here. Okay, here we go. I want you to tell me another thing, okay? You're going to win the prize, but I want you to tell me a lesson you learned from your mom that you thought was wonderful, that helped guide your life. Um, She taught me to be independent and take care of myself because she lost her mother at the age of 12, and she was always scared that none of her kids would know how to take care of themselves, so... She taught us a lot before I was around 12 or 13, and I always felt like I could take care of myself after that. Helen, I love you, and I love your mom. And it's moms out there who teach their daughters and their sons these great lessons that really That's make right. this planet what it is. You know, Helen, I want you to stay on the line and, um, and uh, our call answer will uh, you know, get some information from you so we can uh, work this out and get those beautiful roses out to your mom, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Helen. Hey, everybody else, Helen knocked it out of the ballpark. First one on the line. Did it in under 20 seconds. So let's hear a round of applause for Helen. Here we go. All right. That's great. Ow, ow. Woohoo! You know, I think it's, it's really wonderful. Let me, let me share a couple things with you, if I could, because my mom was great uh, she, when she was with us. She passed away about eight years ago. I love that woman because she taught me so many things. She taught me how to cook. My first meal that I cooked was when I was seven years old. All right? I cooked it for the family. I remember I was sitting there, seven years old, helping my mom out in the kitchen. She always loved to cook. This lady could take leftovers and turn them into five-star restaurant meals. Okay? And she looked at me. She says, Adam, do you want to cook a meal? And I was, I was like, oh, I like eating food. Maybe I like cooking it, you know? So she had me this big old cookbook. I remember it. It was like as big as I was. I like carried away. I felt like I was like Ulysses, you know, carrying this enormous weight. And I slammed it on the table and I opened it up. And I opened up the first page and it was like a lamb. Now, I'm sorry for you vegan folks out there, but I like meat. So bottom line on the whole thing is I made this roast leg of lamb. Then I opened up the next thing in the vegetable section. I had green beans, amandine. And then I opened it up again and I had potatoes au gratin. And then all of a sudden, I just stood there and I said, this is what I want to cook. Now, I said like a question mark because I didn't know I could cook this stuff. This seems sort of complex. There were a lot of ingredients there. I was only seven years old. And my mom stood with me. And that next day, we cooked all this stuff one after another. We put it out on the table. and It was a wonderful thing. That lady was absolutely amazing. She also taught me a lot of different things about life. I remember one time, this was really interesting, and I'm sure every one of you out there has stories like this, but this, these stories just sort of stick inside my heart and make my throat swell up a little bit here. I remember I was uh, approximately uh, about six years old. I was in New York City. I was in, uh, in the uh, 14th story of a, an apartment building with my family um, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. 
And all of a sudden, it was the middle of the night. I don't even know what time it was. I was asleep. I got woken up. There was police outside the door. And all of a sudden, we popped out with my pop mom and, and my dad. And we all of a sudden saw this guy, our next door neighbor, who we always heard a lot of arguments from that, from that apartment, a lot of yelling and screaming because they were constantly fighting with each other. We, we saw this guy. This guy was like six foot seven. He was a monster. He was huge. You know, he was like, looked like one of these professional wrestlers, you know. We saw him getting dragged out on, on a gurney, all right? He was getting dragged out on a gurney, and his wife was sitting there smiling, smiling, okay? And I'm, like, confused at this whole situation. My mom pulls me aside. She said, I'll tell you about this later. Let's just go inside and get back to bed. First thing in the morning, she sits down. She says, I have to have a conversation with you. And I said, what about uh, that thing last night? Yep, got to speak to you about it. And she said, we knew this for a while, and we did contact the police and so on and so forth. But that man next door, he, he's been beating that woman, his wife. Uh, and she's just a, a little lady. But there's a lesson to be learned from this, Adam. I said, what's the lesson? She says, if you're going to be treating someone real poorly... Don't fall asleep and close your eyes in front of him. She had taken an enormous glass ashtray and smashed him in the head with it. And that's why they took him to the hospital. So, you know, son, that was, that, that was a big one for me. I just stood there after my mom said that. I was a little bit in shock about that whole thing. I'm like, thanks, mom. I, I, thanks for the advice. Okay? She also taught me a lot of other things as well. She's a wonderful woman. I, I'm glad I'm able to take this time to give her an homage. And there will be other shows in the future where you'll get an opportunity to get on and share about your mom. Your mom's the one who gave you this guidance. Your mom was your first girlfriend if you were a guy. You know what I mean? Your first example of a woman. My mom taught me something very interesting one day. One day, she handed me $20. She said, I want you to go down to the store and go get some eggs. So I, go, I, I, I got some eggs. No, she gave me a 10. I'm sorry. She gave me a $10 bill, got some eggs, and the guy gave me change for a 20. Now, I thought this was my lucky day. I got changed for a 20, had a new 10. I, was, I felt like I was hitting the stock market here, you know what I mean? Or Vegas or something like that. So I came back and I said, Mom, here it is. And I made money in the deal. She said, what do you mean you made money on the deal? And I said, well, he gave me change for 20. And she sat me down. She put her nose one inch from my nose. She says, son, you never take from another person and steal from them. Unless, of course, there's no other way and your children are hungry. And she looked at me and stared in my eyes for what seemed like an hour, but I'm sure it was seconds. And I remember that every single time someone gives me too much change. I think well, these type of lessons are, are what makes the world go around. Courtesy is what allows us to be able to have a civilization where we don't eat each other alive. Okay? She also was great when it came to homework time. I love that. You know, not homework. I <laughs> didn't like that too much. But she was always standing behind me when I was looking in the books and I was going, I can't find the answer to this question. It's not there. It's not there. She once pulled me after me saying that just too many times. And she pulled me to the side and she says, there's always an answer. You just haven't found it yet. That's an interesting thing. I find so many people out there giving up just, there's just no answer. I give up. She goes, it's just an easier path. We pick this path of least resistance to the detriment of our own future and our own wonderful experience here on this planet. And just to have someone bring you up, Mom, thank you. Thank you. To have someone bring you up and to be able to say, there is always an answer out there. Just look a little harder. Just look a little harder. Okay? And, and, and she was funny at times because there was always times that things happened. Like everybody's life. This stuff that happens in your life where you stand there and you get sad afterwards. And she once sat me down. I think it was, I think it was uh, my, my dog, Abigail. It was a beautiful basset hound. And she was old and she died. And, and we came in and she said, you know something? I know you're feeling sad. But the reason why you're feeling unhappy right now isn't because Abigail died. The reason why you're feeling happy is you've got this belief that the situation is either unfair or shouldn't be happening to you. Your life and the way you live your life is based upon your reactions and beliefs. And she sat me down and she hugged me. And I cried. But it was a wonderful time in my life because I learned a lot. And I learned one really important thing. 
and this is that the only thing you actually own in your life, your only thing, you think you own a house, you think you own a car, you think you own another person because you have a relationship with them and they depend upon you. No, I'm afraid not, my friends. The only thing you actually own in your life is your word. That's right. Your integrity. So when you speak to a person and say something and say you're going to do it, just do it. When you speak about another person behind your back, their back, you're not hurting them. You're hurting you. Everything is your integrity. And if you don't have your integrity, well, you don't have anything. Because in the end, you're not going to bring your car with you. You're not going to bring your bank account with you. You're not going to bring those special stones, even if you're all spiritual and stuff with you. No. You're going to bring you, your soul, and your word. And was it worth something? So I have to thank you, Mom. And I thank you very, very deeply. Because you helped me out. And I'd like to thank every single person's mom out there who took a moment, just one moment, to be able to make your child a better citizen, a better person. You did good. If you're listening right now, you done good. Well, folks, it's time to take a short, short commercial break. I, you know, got on my soapbox here. Stick with us for our last segment. The Adam Harmon Show cosmic astrologer, Dubby Leroy, will be reading the astrology chart and tarot cards for one of our lucky listeners. So make sure you stay tuned. It's going to be fun. And mothers, I love you. Remember, you're loved. I'll see you on the other side. Bye. The fabulous Dovey Leroy. Cosmic astrologer. Oh, girl, it's time to get us cosmic. Yes, we're getting extra cosmic in here. Well, make it happen, girl. <laughs> we want to hear what the universe has to say about this lovely young lady with you. Awesome. So I actually have Toria on the show with me right now. And um, we are going to be giving a live natal chart reading for her. Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Super excited. Do you have Wait all your for questions this. ready all for me? All questions are ready. Oh, yes. good. Okay. Are you, are you going to do some tarot too? Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're going to do tarot. We're going to be talking crystals. I might, you know, fling a little feather on you. You, you never know what's going to happen. There we go. Today. I'll give you some war drums in the background. <laughs> it's be great. Yeah. Ooh, so um, <laughs> a little bit about Toria is that she actually is, I guess you would call it a stylist mm. for um, what? is the what is it called so i do like vintage clothing um i moved here from england but i'm from maryland originally um and i truly enjoy styling because i think it's a way for people to express themselves that's to amazing. think out of the box that's amazing i think that's really important yeah you know right now to mm -hmm. learn how to express yourself yeah. in a good positive way Ooh. Yes, yes. Express yes. yourself, girl. Express yourself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Toria, she's an Aquarius sun. She is a Cancerian moon. And, fun fact, she is a Cancer rising. So that is a lot of water energy. Mm. Um, is there anything that you maybe want to ask me or you want to maybe know about or um, tap into? Yeah. So I think, you know, I've been in L.A. for about four years. Uh -huh. And I've seen quite a transition within my spirit. Yes. Um, I've always been very articulate and very outgoing, um, very extroverted. Oh, yes. But I became very introverted for a while when I was here mm -hmm. because I felt I didn't quite find my place. I didn't know how to um, engage with people and um, and have good uh, nurturing conversations. Yes. Because you know, I'm kind of goofy uh -huh. and I'm kind of fun. And yeah. I love that about myself. Yes. But I thought I had to change. And so... Uh, in the past year, I got a new man, a new job, um, someone that's quite articulate, and I find myself flourishing in such a beautiful way. In this relationship. But that transition happened so quick yes. that I'm kind of curious as to how it happened. So the windows of opportunity, I guess. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. And looking at your chart right now, I see that you actually have um, Neptune in mm -hmm. Sagittarius in your sixth house. And Saturn was going through your sixth house during that time about a year ago. So you were probably honestly dissolving the sense of who you thought you were and coming mm -hmm. to a conclusion of who I am. Okay. And with that, that's probably why you could actually, and honestly, that could have also like tapped a little bit of that from your relationship, mm -hmm. um, which you are a Venus Pisces. So you're very compassionate and loving. Um, but yeah, you actually, 
that was supposed to happen at that time because you completely went to a sense of who you were in all. And um, with that dissolving of that ego, it really allowed you to flourish. So definitely was that. And then, honestly, you had about two years before that, you had a development of individuality. Mm, So that might have been why you felt a little bit uncomfortable. It's because you didn't necessarily know the distinction of who you were and who you are. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's it. And then the the young man that just spoke. Yes. um, He really touched on a a lot of things about taking care of yourself. And I know for me, it was more of me setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I thought setting boundaries was hurting that person because I would say no. You're a people pleaser. I am. A total people pleaser. Oh, yeah. Um. (laughs) <laughs> and so, <laughs> you don't want to step on toes. Because, like, <laughs> because when I really look at it, the woman I am now, I never would tolerate some of those behaviors. Uh huh. But I think I had to grow and mature into that yes. person. And I know um, for me, I feel like there's windows of opportunity. Yes. And I've always been really good at seeing those windows. And and kind of jumping on it and engaging in it. And yeah. when I miss that window, I feel like wow that was my time yeah um and i don't maybe that's a bit arrogant of me to think that i can control time but i think in my mind's eye i know when something feels right when it's appropriate yes um but i always wonder is that something too as well so what's entering is that you have a little bit of a daydreaming sense within you Mm. and that also has to do with your sixth house and um with that little bit of daydreamy sense that means that when these, because you do, it shows in here that you do have large windows. And if you see a window, it's like, it's big. Mm. Um, but with that little sense of, you know, like daydreamy, like out of there sense, you might not necessarily tap into the advantage of what it is. Right. And that would be because you are actually kind of floating mm-hmm. and you're not grounding what it is that you want to grasp onto. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little bit going within yourself and like actually coming to terms with I'm going to do this strictly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Adding that structure Mm -hmm. because that would be the little bit of the um, why you wouldn't actually grab onto it would be because of that. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, this is this is the first time and I'm 38 now um, that I actually feel quite grounded. Yes. Um, You know, I've lived in a lot of different cities and a couple of different countries. And I feel really blessed because I think it cultivated me as mm-hmm. a woman to see different cultures, to engage with uh, different people. But um, this is probably the first time in a long time where I feel like I'm very grounded and very yes. planted and very comfortable with saying no yeah. and not upset if that person is upset with me, Yeah, which was a really hard thing for me to do. Yes. It really was. And it yeah. sounds crazy, but no, looking it's back, it was very a hard. A lot of people have that issue. Yeah. yeah. Would well, you yes. know what I want to see happen here? What? Could you pull out some of those tarot cards? Because when she pulls yes. out tarot cards, yeah. there's okay. like lightning Let's in see the, the audience. Tarot card. What's okay. going on? You have to ask her a question, though. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. Okay, oh. ask me a question. Bring it on. Um, okay, so I'm I am really happy with my current position. Mm-hmm. I really am, but I always felt like um, I would have my own business one day, and not in the sense of like fiscally amazingly wealthy, but in my own sense that I can wake up at eight and set my schedule and, you know, uh, cultivate a healthy lifestyle for myself, but still being my own boss and fiscally yes. responsible Yes, um, in that way. So what's your question? So my question is, is that going to happen? Uh, do you see that arising All in right. my future? The cards so are coming to tap out. into it. Okay, I'm going to pick this one for Toria. Okay. So improving health, just so you know. This, um, the energy that I'm feeling on it is that you need to tap into the things that are around you that you can actually take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And you also need to do things that improve the way that you get things out there. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you need to, um, start scheduling things in different manners Mm -hmm. and you need to start, um, how do I say this? Um, you need to start feeding yourself with things that are going to get you that to that situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Strictly. Yeah. The problem is structure and tiptoeing. Okay. With you, I feel. Yeah. And um, that will really, really help you be able to um, get you to that point where you can have your own business and, you know, follow that creative flow. Because mm. in your third house, it is ran by Leo. And that means – and your second house. And that means that you can creatively make money and you can have a fear of not making money. Mm. But you have creative mm. thought processes. And okay. 
that is definitely something that will feed your soul and make you very, very happy okay. if you, you know, balance that out within yourself. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh-huh. What kind of stones do you think would be good for this lady? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So I brought the biggest stone I have. The biggest, <laughs> the heart. The heart yeah, so this stone. is calcite. It's quite and heavy. Calcite is an energy amplifier, and it um, it enhances your gifts that you mm. possess, and it uh, it really removes any pollution that's inside of you that's making it to where you would not be able to have those gifts, you know, be present. Right. Yes. And it's also all about your lower chakras because you have a lot of emotional and a lot of um, air energy inside of you, mm. which means a lot of your energy is up here. Yes. And you need to ground it. Mm-hmm. And you need to, if you ground <laughs> it, then you will actually be able to create something that is real. Right. Tangible. Instead of up here in your head or, mm. you know, the thoughts. Is yeah. she hitting it on the head here? Yeah, she definitely is. There you I, go. I said this is the year I've definitely felt more grounded and yep. – um, you know, feeling like I'm um, more available and vulnerable to speak on things. You oh, know? good. Mm-hmm. Because you are all about communication also in your sign. You I am, great yes. with that. <laughs> yes. And then I also um, have my little Shiva. <laughs> What's a Shiva? So um, it's honestly like the balance of male and female energy. Oh, and yes. it does a kundalini effect. Mm. Which is when, if you place it on your root chakra, which is lower, the bottom chakra by your privates. <laughs> I'm getting in there. Place I'm going to say your privates it. <laughs> if you um, if you put it there and you start p- feeling the energy from it because it's very sacred and very powerful. This mm. is a very sacred, powerful stone. It's mm. actually quartz that's um has a I don't want to say mutations, but it has different things involved in it to make it like this. Mm-hmm. And um, if you place it there and you allow the energy to come up through every chakra, okay, it'll unblock all of these lower chakras. Which this one right here is your creativity. Yeah, and you need that to become unblocked. In your heart chakra, you have emotion mm-hmm. and sensitivity within you. If you unblock mm-hmm. right there, because that's what I'm feeling needs unblocked. I actually mm-hmm. feel it. Um, then it will process through and go up to your crown chakra and then it'll make you completion the last time i meditated with this stone i literally came to completion with my kundalini effect and Mm. felt a sense of me turning into a piece of paper and blowing in the wind whatever that means but i saw that and i felt it (laughs) i'm gonna start singing dust in the wind (laughs) debbie Leroy, how can people uh, how can people find you and and reach out to you you can contact me through debbie Leroy astrology at gmail.com or you can contact her directly at Dovey Leroy, L E R O Y, at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, how much does it char- uh, do you charge for a natal chart? That would be $85. Wow, that's a great nice. price. That's I seen, know. I've seen mm-hmm. gra- but you know something? She wants to make sure she can get out there as much as possible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. And anybody that contacts me, I will definitely throw in a your choice natal chart reading or a tarot reading for free on My me. My goodness gracious. You know yes. something? Hold on a second here. We're going to do a little something here. Okay. Here we go. All right, we were moving the camera around. Hey, how you doing? Well, that's great. Hey, once again, it is time to wrap things up with the show. Okay, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us at the Adam Harman Show on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and for great inspiration and video posts. Um, tune in next Saturday night. We're going to be having on rock star shaman Allison Charles. She's going to be sharing how to use the wisdom of shamanic practices in the modern world for greater success and happiness. Make sure you tune in next Saturday at 8 p.m. for that. You don't want to miss that one. Well, until next time, all of us here at The Adam Harmon Show would like to thank you for listening, and we hope you have a week filled, or actually free, of roadblocks and full of success. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.